Hi, my name is Pavel and I'm the technical lead for Firebase GenKit. And in this video, I'd like to take a closer look at how Firebase GenKit works. So when you start out with GenKit, you would typically run GenKit init uh, and it would generate um, some sample code for you. Uh, and it would look something like this. Uh, and in this example, we have uh, a menu suggestion generator. So uh, when you, uh, after you, you run, uh, initialize your code, you would just go and run uh, GenKit start and it would start to run your code and run the, the development, uh, developer UI for you. So you would uh, go to the developer UI and you can uh, play around with the models. Like you can go say, you know, hi to the model uh, and, or you can go run the flow. So in, uh, in this case, uh, it's a, we want to generate a birthday themed menu and this will uh, run the flow and we should get our birthday themed flow here. Perfect. So, you know, this is great, but how does it actually work uh, under the hood? So, so what, one thing to remember about, about GenKit is that like when you're building a GenKit app, you are building a uh, Node.js app, essentially. So, uh, and as with any Node.js app, you can run it uh, with directly with Node. Uh, and if we just run it like this, it'll just basically run it in production mode, right? So this is how you would uh, run it in production. So, uh, and here we see that it started our flow server. So in this case, we're using the flow server. Uh, but like if you're using uh, Firebase, uh, Cloud Functions for Firebase, you would run them with Cloud Functions for Firebase. So uh, so yeah, we have our flow server running on port 3400 and we're serving our menu suggestion flow here and, and nothing else. So like if we go uh, try to refresh our de uh, developer UI, we're not gonna get anything, but we, we can go and, and actually, uh, you know, make direct HTTP calls against our running server. So we're just gonna, with curl, we're say, you know, the same thing, you know, birthday theme menu, or, you know, let's go take a look with Postman here. So we can just go and do the same thing, uh, menu suggestion flow, and here's the data uh, that we're passing in there it's for birthday. And we should get the same, the same response. Uh, this is great. This is running in production mode. This is exactly what we want, but, uh, how does GenKit actually run this in, in development mode? So when you run GenKit start, you know, what happens? So one thing happens in, uh, in development mode is that, uh, GenKit start would actually run your code, uh, in development mode by uh, setting some environment variables, specifically GenKit environment set to dev. So if we run our code like this now, uh, you know, we still get our, you know, flow server running on port 3400, still available, same thing, like we can go and make uh, curl requests against it and it should work. But one other thing that we notice here, it actually, it says uh, reflection API running on port 3100. So in development mode, your code exposes a reflection API. And what is a reflection API? A reflection API uh, exposes everything that you have in your in, in as part of the Jenkit framework. So for example, here, like if, if we go make an HTTP call to port 3100 and say, okay, list our actions available in the code, it says, hey, you have your flow here. Uh, and, and this is the, you know, input and output schema for your flow. And here, this is the, the, the JSON schema. And uh, this JSON schema is coming from our uh, schema specified in here. Here we specified in Zod, but internally we translated to JSON schema and we can, uh, you know, uh, display it through the reflection API. There's a bunch of other metadata, but, you know, maybe let's go search for, you know, maybe for text AI and, and we see, we have also models in there. Here's our image end model that we have configured. Uh, and let's go we'll look for something else. Oh, there's a Gemini model available there as well. So basically like everything that you have, uh, like maybe specify in plugins or you may manually define is exposed through the, uh, uh, through the reflection API. Uh, and, and we can also just call these actions through the reflection API directly. So here we will make a call to port 3100 
uh, Reflection API and say, run this action. And we're saying, this is the action that we want to run, our menu flow, and we're just going to pass the same input. And we'll see that it will run it. And uh, here, yeah, we, we, we get our get our response, but a bunch of other additional information that we uh, that we use in the developer UI. But also, we see some standard additional information, for example, telemetry. So all of the actions that are exposed to the Reflection API and actions is basically the internal Genkit framework concept that we use to build everything. And uh, actions are self-describing, self-validating, observable, and they're locally and remotely callable functions, basically. So, and it basically allows us to call them both locally and remotely uh, through the code or through the reflection API, and they're observable. So there's we, we get all the trace information and uh, a bunch of other interesting things. So, uh, yeah, so here we have our code running uh, in development mode with Reflection API, but as I said, we, we still don't have the, the the developer UI. So how do we get the developer UI? The, to, to run the develop to get the developer UI, you, you need to run uh, uh, Genkit start. Uh, but you know, when you just if you just run Genkit start as is, it's gonna try to run the code uh, and uh, do some micromanaging of of ports. It'll watch the code. So if you uh, make changes and save, it'll recompile and restart uh, your code and everything. But we actually already have it running here, right? So like, we, we have it available through, like uh, we can see here's our code running and Reflection API running. Uh, there's an option for uh, for Genkit start to attach it to already running process. So here we'll say, okay, just run the developer UI, but attach it to this, uh, to the Reflection API running at this address. We'll do that, and we see we have our uh, UI running. And if we come here, we see that uh, now we can use the, the the developer UI against our running code. Uh, but you know, yeah, as as I said, we don't have to do it like this. We can we can just simply run Genkit start, and it will uh, run the code, uh, build it, rebuild it if necessary, and run the developer UI. So here, if we just you know make changes. You see it, like it picked up that there's a change, recompile, restart, uh, and the developer UI is still uh, running here. So yeah, this is a quick look at how Genkit actually works. And in future videos, we'll uh, take a you know closer look at observability uh, and streaming and other features of, of Genkit. Uh, yeah, thanks. Mm -hmm.